The 2017-2018 Ducati Scrambler Café Racer and Desert Sled Ducati's Scrambler line grew yet again in the 2017 model year with the addition of the Café Racer and Desert Sled. The Scrambler range has proven to be a veritable mine of possibilities as Ducati capable model in the entire range, and the Café Racer, well, it comes set up to look cool in an urban environment. Both rides get the same 803cc mill that powers the rest of the Scrambler variants along with much the same chassis, but the differences, however minor, make all the difference in the world. Continue reading for my review of the Ducati Scrambler Café Racer and Desert Sled. Design We have a common Scrambler core, but as we move away from center, things begin to diverge rapidly. I've been eager to take a look at these bikes, and I look at this as a chance to gauge what all Ducati has learned from a few years of customer feedback and factory testing, so let's check it out. Similar but specialized, this pair bears all the familial markers in the shape of the exhaust, the fuel tank and the frame structure. In other words, we have a common scrambler core. As we move away from center, things begin to diverge rapidly. On the cafe, clip-on handlebars pull the rider into an aggressive jockey position, and bar-end mirrors keep things nice and clean. Inverted front forks mount a cast rim with a front fender that has been sliced and diced down to a bare minimum, much like the original cafe racers. The saddle comes with a shallow scoop for the rider and a hard pillion cover that, honestly, serves as the most tangible connection to the CR models of yesteryear. Standoff turn signals and a tucked away tail light keeps the subframe relatively clean, and much like the front, the rear comes with a postage stamp fender eliminator that all but disappears behind the license plate. I guess one could argue that the number plate on each side could be another classic CR reference, but race numbers are so widely used I think that would be something of a reach. Still, it fits the look. Next we have the off-road Tastic Desert Sled. The main design influence for this model comes from the California desert circa 1960s through the 70s. You can see it in the laced wheels, high front fender and rock guard over the single headlight. The single handlebar carries just a touch of rise and pullback, and the crossbar immediately calls to mind the motocross sector, not a bad connection to make if you're going for a slice of the on-road, off-road market. A bash plate on the chin adds both to the function and the overall panache, and the bench seat makes for easy two-up riding with plenty of room to shift weight fore and aft for technical work. All very off-road horrific, and there's even more stashed away in the chassis components, so let's look there next. Chassis The cafe comes set up to carve, whereas the desert sled cones ready for off-road shenanigans. These rides come with basically the same frame as the rest of the family, which is to say a trellis assembly built from tubular steel members. I say, basically, because the factory beefed up the desert sled a bit beyond stock so that it may better withstand the jumps and rough treatment associated with off-road fun, especially if you are doing it right. First off, the sled's swing arm has been lengthened and strengthened while the frame and swing arm plates got beefed up as well. Steering geometry on the sled is average at 24 degrees with 4.4 inches of trail and a 59.3 inch wheelbase, but the cafe pulls the forks into a tight 21.8 degrees with 3.7 inches of trail and a 56.5 inch wheelbase. Obviously, the cafe comes set up to carve, and it does so with a plum on 41 mm Kaaba front forks and a preload adjustable monoshock. The sled, on the other hand, rides on fully adjustable, 46 mm forks with a preload and rebound adjustable rear shock. Not only does the size difference make the sled front end tougher and better able to handle the stresses of off-road shenanigans, but it gets 7.9 inches of suspension travel at the axle, front and rear, while the cafe claims only 5.9 inches. The cafe runs 17-inch cast rims with Pirelli's Diablo Rosso 2 hoops at both ends, but the sled bumps the laced front wheel up to 19 inches with Scorpion Rally STR Road knobbies, also by Pirelli. Both bikes run a single, 330mm front disc with a four-pot caliper and a 245mm rear with abs protection as part of the standard trim package. Drivetrain The Heine Dino registers plenty of horsepower and torque for gobs of fun on any surface. We have an updated engine from last year, but really the changes were only to meet the Euro 4 emission standards. It's still the proven, air-cooled L-twin that powers the rest of the Scrambler range. 
Desmodromic timing controls the two valve heads with a 50 mm throttle body to manage the induction. The 88 mm bore and 66 mm stroke gives us an oversquare, 803 cc displacement, and an 11 to 1 compression ratio will require mid grade pusholing at the least. Although the mill is air cooled, it does mount an oil cooler high on the downtubes for a little extra protection for the engine's lifeblood. Duck mitigates the exhaust note with a Termagnoni silencer in the exhaust system that also boasts a catalytic converter and pair of lambda probes that also help the mill meet emissions requirements. What all this gives us is a plant that produces 50 pound feet of torque at 5,750 revolutions per minute and 75 horsepower once you wind it up to 8,250 revolutions per minute on a bike that weighs in at 414 pounds soaking ass wet. Fun times, my friends. Fun times. Price. MSRP is up $300 over last year, but essentially the same color choices all around. The Cafe Racer comes with black sheet metal and a dark tan saddle with an $11,695 MSRP, while the Desert Sled comes in red dusk for the same price. The sled is also offered in white Mirage or black edition for a couple o' bills more at $11,895. Competitor The scales will tip based on the price versus power equation between the two. Nowadays we have scramblers o' plenty from every quarter, and one can hardly swing a cat without hitting one anymore. Even companies without old-school scrambler roots are cashing in on the resurgent popularity of the genre, but I thought it would be appropriate to look at a company that was around for the originals, so my pick for the head-to-head -head against the Desert Sled is the air-cooled scrambler from Triumph. The Triumph's British looks are a big selling point for me, but there are trade-offs. In spite of my preference for the scrambler's unsprung front fender, I must concede that it isn't as appropriate for off-road work as the mildly hideous, triple-tree mount mudguard on the duck. The desert sled's wire headlight cage makes up for the fender somewhat with boss looks and an extra layer of real-world protection. Where Ducati went with a trellis frame, Trumpet kept it old school with a double downtube, double cradle bone structure. Duck went with the modern tech at the front end as well with a 41mm, inverted front fork and laydown monoshock in back versus the pair of external coil overs and right way up forks on the Triumph. Neither bike really gets any points in the suspension department, and come only with adjustable spring preload at the rear end. As big as the 310mm front brake disc is on the Triumph, the Duck is a skosh bigger at 330mm, and Ducati brings the only abs to the table. The engines represent a classic matchup of V-twin versus parallel twin with Triumph holding the size edge with an 865cc displacement. Air cooling and fuel injection are constants across the board, but the engine note is quite different. The duck naturally has a V-twin lope, and the trumpet runs a 270-degree firing order that has a tempo brake all its own. Power output sees Duck pulling ahead with its 75 ponies, well over the 50 horsepower trumpet, but both produce the same 50 pounds o' grunt. That may well be a deal breaker for some. Speaking of deals, Duck comes off looking a little proud at the checkout with an $11,695 sticker while last year's Triumph Scrambler rolled for just under the 10k mark at between $9,400 and $9,900 depending on which color you choose, and that may be a deal breaker for folks on a budget. The scales will tip based on the price versus power equation, most likely. He said. I like Ducati's Scrambler family, and especially like how flexible it is as a platform that lends itself to multiple genres. Having said that, I think I prefer the looks and price on the Trumpet cause I like the British look, and Trumpet has the more genuine product. However, if you aren't hung up on such things like I am, there's nothing wrong with the Ducati ride. She said. My wife and fellow writer, Alan Hinton, says these scramblers have been Ducati's best sellers by a mile and it's no wonder. They took a classic style and revved it up to be a fun to ride bike. Now they've come out with a bike that actually lives up to the scrambler name in the desert sled. It's tall as would be expected in a proper off-roader and comes with the appropriate accessories for the job. Finally, we have a scrambler that actually is a scrambler and not just in name only. Specifications. References Triumph Scrambler 
See our review of the Triumph Scrambler. If you liked this video, please share your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.